Good morning, students. Today we are going to start with a new idea of Chapter 11, the work and energy, which is the potential energy. At the end of this video, you are able to define energy, to define potential energy. Identify and write the formula of potential energy. Give examples of the two forms of potential energy. Let's start with the definition of energy. Energy is the ability or the capacity to do work. It is measured by the capability of doing work, the potential energy, or the conversion of this capability to motion, the kinetic energy, that we are going to deal with in the next video. In other words, we can say that the energy is the ability to cause change, which makes something do something or it's what causes change in everything. Earthquakes, rain, even human growth is all because of energy. Here we have two types of energy, the kinetic energy and the potential energy, that in turn has two forms, the gravitational potential energy and the elastic potential energy. But what we mean by the word potential? The word potential is stored so we can say that the potential energy is the stored energy. This energy may be stored due to position or shape. If it is stored due to position, so the type of potential energy is gravitational, GPE or PEG. And if this it is stored due to shape, then this type is elastic potential energy denoted by EPE or PEE. So, the gravitational potential energy depends upon an object's height above a reference point. To calculate this gravitational potential energy at a certain point, we multiply the object's mass multiplied by the Earth's gravitational pull by the height of the object above the chosen reference. So, the formula of the GPE or PEG is equal to the mass multiplied by the gravity multiplied by the height, mgh. Take into consideration that any point on the reference frame has no height, so its gravitational potential energy it is equal to zero. Here is a table that represents the formula and the unit of each symbol. The formula of the gravitational potential energy is mgh, where m represents the mass in SI unit kilogram. G represents the acceleration due to gravity. Unit is meter per second square, and H represents the height of the object above a chosen reference with a unit meter. Here we have books on a shelf. All the books have a gravitational potential energy. But which books have the most gravitational potential energy and why? Take the reference for gravitational potential energy is the ground where the boy stands on. Think for a few seconds. Exactly. The farthest books from the ground has the greater gravitational potential energy. Since as the height of the book increases compared to the reference that taken on the ground, then the gravitational potential energy is greater. So here, the gravitational potential energy depends on the height of the object with respect to the chosen reference. Another question. A man and his cell phone are on a ledge outside a very tall building. Which object, the man or his cell phone, has the most great gravitational potential energy and why? The ground is taken as a reference for gravitational potential energy. Think for a few seconds. Here, the, object, the man and the cell phone has the same height above the ground, but the variable here is the mass. The mass of the man is greater than the mass of the cell phone. 
then the gravitational potential energy of the man is greater than the gravitational potential energy of the cell phone. So, here the gravitational potential energy depends on the mass. So, as a conclusion, the gravitational potential energy depends on two factors. The first one is the height and the second one is the mass. The higher the object, the more potential energy. The greater the mass, the more potential energy it has. So, we can conclude that the gravitational potential energy depends on both the mass in kilogram and the height in meter. What about the gravitational potential energy along an inclined plane? Consider the inclined plane AB that makes an angle alpha with the horizontal. Take this horizontal that passes through B as a reference for gravitational potential energy. The gravitational potential energy at B is equal to zero, since any point on the reference of the gravitational potential energy has no height, then no gravitational potential energy. What about the gravitational potential energy at A? A is at a height h above the reference, so its gravitational potential energy is equal to the mass of the ball multiplied by the gravity g multiplied by the height h a denoted by h. So the gravitational potential energy at a is equal to g h. Suppose that h is not given and a b is given and alpha is given. Here we can say that h is opposite to the angle alpha. So h is equal to the hypotenuse AB multiplied by the sine of the angle alpha. So the gravitational potential at A can be written in the form mg AB multiplied by sine alpha. Knowing that AB sine alpha is the height at the point A. Case of Pandal At equilibrium position of the pendulum, take the horizontal plane passing through A as a reference for gravitational potential energy. So, the gravitational potential energy at point A is equal to zero, H is equal to zero. What about the gravitational potential energy at point B? In the second picture, we have that the height or point A is, is represented by or denoted by HA. The height of the point B is HA. HA is equal to OA minus OH. OA is L. OH in the triangle OBH is equal to the hypotenuse L multiplied by cosine so we can write that HA is equal to L minus L cosine theta. So the gravitational potential energy of B can be written in the form mg instead of H we can write L into 1 minus cosine theta. Examples of gravitational potential energy Water at the top of waterfall You you inhale in your, fin, in your hand It stores energy because of position What about the other form of the potential energy? The elastic potential energy The potential energy of an object that it is stretched or compressed when the object is stretched or compressed, we say that this form of energy is elastic potential energy. Here are two examples of the elastic potential energy. Stretching a rubber band, drawing a ball.
The ball has energy because work has been done to change its shape. The energy of that work is turned into potential energy. When the arrow is released, the potential energy of the ball and the strain will be transferred to the arrow, sending it flying it through the air. Similarly, compressed or squished springs also have potential energy. A spring has energy because work has been done to change its shape. Just like the bow, the energy of the two work, just like the bow, the energy of that work is turned into potential energy. So these are two examples of the elastic potential energy. So simply, there are two types of potential energy. At first, the word potential means stored. When I say stored energy, it means able or about to do something but is not just yet. This ball could fall, but it hasn't yet. There are two basic examples of potential energy. For elastic energy, the ball can shoot the arrow, but it isn't right now. So elastic energy is caused by changing the shape of an object, stretching, bending, pulling, or screeching. For the gravitational potential energy, the boulder can fall, but it hasn't yet. So the gravitational potential energy is caused by the force of gravity pulling down on an object while the object is being held up. So at the conclusion, we have two main types of energy, the kinetic and the potential. The potential energy is a stored energy. The potential energy has two types, the gravitational that depends on position and the elastic that is stored due to shape. The gravitational potential energy depends on mass and height and, it, and it's equal to GPE equal mgx or mgab sine alpha in the case of inclined plane or GP equal mgl into 1 minus cosine alpha in the case of the pendulum. The SI unit of energy is 2. See you in the next video with the kinetic energy.